As believers of the Lord, we should always remember that in the most difficult and trying days of our life here on earth, we could always trust the Lord in the Lord. And from knowing that we have the Lord to take care of us, we can live confidently and continue on with our journey. With the Lord always on our side, we can triumph in everything, whatever the problems might be. And we can do more for His kingdom and the gospel because we know the Lord will always have our back. It is as if you can hear the Lord say, Go on, I'm with you. Tonight, I'm going to preach to you on the subject I entitled, The Stillness, The Stilling of the Storm. The Stilling of the Storm. I would like to use this story to speak not of a physical or natural calamity, but one that is emotional and spiritual calamity that happens to our lives. I hope that we could be able to relate to that today. Because all of us, I don't care who you are, I don't care what kind of power you have, I don't care what, how much money you have, all of us have those things in life. We can become emotionally unstable, isn't it? We can have all the troubles in our own mind. We can get so stressed out. We don't even know what to do. We're so much stressed that uh, there's nothing we can do anymore. And I'd like to use this story about the stilling of the storm to speak to us of something very spiritual and emotional. First of all, there was a great storm. The great storm of wind, the Bible says. And I would like to picture the storm as the storms of life. Like adversity, trials, afflictions, testing, sickness, other things that you experience, many of which are our own making. Am I right? Many of which is our own kind of consequence of sin. And some are just plain testings in life. These are the storms of life. I'd like you to listen well to the message today. So perhaps what I'm going to tell you right now, you can relate that in your own life and begin to realize whatever storms you have, they're too small compared to mine. I'd like you to notice that the disciples followed Christ to the ship, bound to the other side of the lake. They journeyed to the other side of the lake. However, a strong storm met them that threw them in panic despite being in the presence of the Lord. Everyone feared for his life. That even the apostles and disciples failed to trust in Jesus. You realize that when you begin to see with your own eyes the problems you have, you know what happens? Your faith crumbles. Did you hear me? Your faith crumbles. Instead of crying out to God that your faith be strong, but because of your own very eyes, you're able to see all of the storms coming to you. You do not have the heart to believe in Jesus anymore. 
As believers of the Lord, we should always remember that in the most difficult and trying days of our life here on earth, we could always trust the Lord in the Lord. And from knowing that we have the Lord to take care of us, we can live confidently and continue on with our journey. With the Lord always on our side, we can triumph in everything, whatever the problems might be. And we can do more for his kingdom and the gospel because we know the Lord will always have our back. It is as if you can hear the Lord say, go on, I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll always be there. But so many times we begin to experience the great storms in life. We even fail to believe in what the Word of God says. You see? Now, in this story that we have tonight on the great storm, first of all here, we find the undisturbed master and lord of the earth. Undisturbed. Asleep and peaceful. Verse 24 of Matthew chapter 8, it says, And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was what? Asleep. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ on earth was a man. He experienced all the emotions of man. He experienced being tired, you know, being weary. Oh, naranasan niyang mapagod. Naranasan niya ang walang pahinga. At that very moment, nung siya nasa barko, it was time for him to rest. So he fell asleep. At that time, the Lord Jesus Christ, even if he was a son of God, experienced all the frailties of man, yet without sin. The storms and cares of life did not bother the Lord Jesus at all. He is a picture of a true and confident leader. Confident. Now you see me confident, isn't it? I am not Confident on my own. I am confident because of the confidence of Jesus Christ. Not my own. I am a coward. I am not that brave. But the Lord gave me his confidence. And because he gave me his confidence, I am confident to face all the problems that I have in life. Jesus, the Son of God, as a man, had absolute trust in God, his Father. He perfectly knew what life is all about, so there is no need to fear the seeming neglect of his safety and the rest of his companions in the ship. Storms come our way. You see now? Storms come our way as God's way to test our faith and our trust in Him. Do you have that faith? Your faith will be tested. If you are not tested, then your faith is not real. Whether they be natural calamities or personal emotional storms, 
Physical sickness can be an emotional and traumatic storm, not only to one who have it, but even those who love him dearly. Upon knowing the death of Nila Anselmo, I was troubled in the predicament of my brother, who will be 69 years old this October. You know, he had a heart disease. But the same manner, my brother had a 1.5 centimeter lump in his lungs. It was hard for him to breathe. His appetite was taken away. In those three months, he lost 35 pounds. He had all the tests given to him, including biopsy. But I was wondering why the doctor told him that the biopsy will take 10 days for the result. I was telling my brother, that's America. In the Philippines, the result comes in five days. Why 10 days? And then the doctor called him and said, on Tuesday, when I give you the result, we are going to have a talk together. It, it bothers me. I've been praying to God, Lord, I pray that the biopsy will result into a benign lump in the lungs. I pray it is not cancerous. Even if my brother Hernes would smile at us and tell us everything is all right, we know not everything is all right. Pastor Joey Sauco called me up the other day and asked me if I could be able to call Mrs. Edna Serrano in Butuan City because the whole family is quite troubled on what happened to Pastor Vic Serrano. I said, why? So I called up but the Vic and his wife answered the phone. You know, but the Vic was a strong man. Quite a busy man because he goes to every place in Agusan to start the work or to help the pastors. He would travel in the mountains. And he would always give me pictures on his travels and everything like this. And I really enjoyed seeing that because at 78 years old, he still can go out there in the mountains and walk and preach and win souls. I even told the Lord, Lord, how I wish that I could be able to do that when I get to be 78 years old, if ever I'm going to reach that age. But two days ago, something happened. His stomach became big. He had hematoma all over the stomach. His prostate, PCA, grew from 10 PCA to 68 PCA in two weeks. 
He had to be transferred to Davao City so that specialists can see him. That when he was transferred to, to, to Davao City and the doctors, hematologists, urologists, saw the hematoma in his stomach, apparently he had bleeding inside, they were surprised. They said, that's the first time that we ever saw such thing. You look at a man who used to be so strong, so busy in the Lord's work, all of a sudden, his stomach becomes bloated. And because of the internal bleeding, all of the part of the stomach became black. They gave me the picture. And I cannot even show that to you because it's gruesome. I do realize the trauma and the emotional storms that were experienced by Mrs. Serrano and the whole Serrano family seeing their own father that way. These are, the, these are just some of the storms that I can give you and show you that it affects all of us. Do you think that what happened to Badet Serrano is a consequence of his own sin? No. He was peacefully serving God. It was not because he was alcoholic or he was a chain smoker or Things like this. He was a godly man. Storms would come. And here we find the apostles looking for Jesus. Finding him asleep despite the storm. Waking him up and telling him, Master, do you care? Do you care if we perish? They all became afraid. And the Lord stood up and rebuked them and said, Why are you so fearful? And rebuked them gently and said, O oh, ye of little faith. Fear is the enemy of faith. Then afterwards, the Bible says he arose. He rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. So here we have, secondly, the disciples' distress. In Mark 4.38, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? The disciples were so fearful and panicking that they forgot the Lord was with them and that he can save all of them. They forgot that. They were so fearful of their lives that they without hesitation woke up the Lord and asked him if he does not care for their safety. This is a picture and a cry of a troubled soul wanting peace. 
if their faith is there, if they will just make use of their faith, even if they, if they, even if they see the storm as great as it was, looking at Jesus, they will not be afraid because they know Jesus is there. Isn't it? But I begin to understand the human beings too. Not perfect. Can be afraid. Not, you know, not any one of you would like to lose your job, isn't it? And when you lose your job, particularly if you come from abroad and you lost your job abroad and you come back here to the, to the Philippines and you cannot find a job at all, it disturbs you. And there are times you begin to ask, why, Lord, I'm faithful. Lord, I'm serving you. Why can't I find a job? Trabaho lang yun, di ba? You begin to put, a, put up a home and a family. And you thought that, you know, all families are all right. There would not be any problems at all. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you begin to experience problems with your wife or your husband or your children. And there are times you don't know what to do, isn't it? Storms at home. Hmm? What is your home compared to mine? Huh? Do you can, can count right now how many spiritual children I have right now? And you complain about your home? Are you all a blessing to me? No, you're not. There are times I would look at your face. Instead of being happy, I get angry. The disciples distress. Thirdly, we have the Savior's rebuke. The Bible says, He rebuked the apostles by saying, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? And he rebuked the sea and the wind. And there was a great calm. You know, when you speak of being affected by all those storms, and you become fearful, do you know what is the underlying sin there? Huh? In, fear, in being fearful, the underlying sin is what? Unbelief. That's the cause. And what is the cause of unbelief? Fear. Fear. How could the ship sink? With the creator in it. Diba? How? And I don't care what kind of problems you have in your own homes. But how can you continue on with those problems that you cannot even solve when you know for a fact that Jesus Christ is there in your own home? Why are you always bothered? Why? Why are you always fearful?
you know, there in Las Marinas, when I took over and I have put the pastor under my care, and the pastor again began to tell those people about what happened, about the past, about the complaints, about the accusations. I said, forget it. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth. Let's move on. We cannot move on if we always want to dig on the past. You know what I'm saying? You cannot. Can you? Ang galing mo naman kung magagawa mo yun. Ah, na maglalakad ka. Ah, pero dala-dala mo yung trouble mo sa likod. Can't do it. You have to give everything to the Lord and move on. Amen? Now, I'm not just telling it to you. I'm telling it to myself too. Why? Because we're in the same boat, folks. We're all human beings here. We are all sinners saved by grace. We still have the old nature. And these are the old nature affecting us when troubles and problems come. We have the Savior's rebuke. And fourthly, we find the disciples got amazed. They were all amazed when they witnessed how the Lord commanded the sea to be still. They said in verse number 41 of Mark chapter 4, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? They begin to realize that the Lord Jesus Christ is not, is not like them. He's different. He's the Son of God. And He came to deliver His people out of their sin. He came to help us with our problems. He came to give us peace in the midst of the storm. He came to comfort us when our, there are troubles ahead of us. He came! Wake up! You're not the Lord, so don't sleep on me. That's the great storm. And then secondly, we have the great and faithful God. Yes, we have all of those great storms, and, but we have a great and faithful God. See it? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, And verse number 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Let me qualify one of the meanings of temptations here. Temptations here is in reference to adversities, afflictions, trouble. And as I quote the meaning of this, it says, sent by God and serving to test or prove one's character, faith, and holiness. The Lord would at times send those temptations to us, and we speak of temptations to be afflictions, trials, 
adversities and trouble, the Lord at times will send that to us to prove us, to test us, to test our character, to test our faith, to test our holiness. If we still would put the Lord first in our lives, and even if we are bothered by it, yet despite all those being bothered, we still believe that God is still on the throne. The great and faithful God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 7, it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. There are three things that I would like you to see here. To a great and faithful God, I want you to see his attitude. In Mark 4, 37 and 38, we find the Lord Jesus Christ fast asleep, isn't it? He was so tired in his own travels, he went to sleep. And take note that despite of, of the storm, he still was asleep. I look at the thing, you know, I look at that thing as an attitude, an attitude of a restful spirit. An attitude of giving everything to God. And even if you try to sway him with all of the problems in life, he would not be swayed because he trusted the Lord. That is an attitude. Listening to me here? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's an attitude. A restful attitude. A confident attitude. An attitude in which in our own lives some rain must fall. But behind those clouds the sun is still rising. Do you believe that? Huh? Do you believe that? Sometimes we begin to look at those nimbus clouds full of rain. We forget that behind those clouds, the sun is still there. We just look at those nimbus clouds and we get affected by it. We cry over it. We weep over it. We get stressed over it. We don't know what to do. Then after those rain, after those clouds, you see that sun shining and rising and you begin to appreciate the sun when you begin to see it. Can you appreciate the sun even if you don't see it but you know it's there? Huh? Can you? Did you get my question here? Can you appreciate the sun even if you don't see it but you know it's there. Can you appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ? Even if you do not see him with your own eyes, you know by faith he's there. And he is with you in all troubles. And there are times, folks, that sometimes we are there in the ocean and there are times that the water is filling our own body, but we never sink because God is there. Are there not times in your life you get overwhelmed with problems? Huh? Are there not times in your own life that when troubles come and distress would come and you know, you just do not know what to do. You're overwhelmed by it. 
Perhaps all of a sudden you get sick and you don't even know the kind of sickness and you weep over it. And the thing is, so many times we pray, but we don't pray by faith. We pray nervously. You know what I'm saying? We pray nervously. We pray with fear. We don't pray with faith. Why am I saying that? Sometimes I'm like that too. I told you. We're in the same boat, folks. His attitude. Can we have that kind of restful and confident attitude? There are times you do not need anyone but Christ. Huh? Why do you always want to look at a person? Why do you always tell God, Lord, send me someone? Can you not just depend on the Lord? Am I right? Mm. May mga pagkakataon, akala natin the only way to be happy is to get married. Am I right? Now it's different. The only way to be happy is to have children. I don't care for husbands. We live in a different world. Not even the word love is perverted. And that's the kind of happiness people have. But listen here, our happiness is different. Our happiness is based on the joy of the Lord. It's not based upon your experience and what you see in the world. You get my point here? His attitude, then his power. His power. In Mark 4, verse number 39, kita natin how the, how the, the, the apostles saw how the Lord rebuked the wind, how the Lord rebuked the sea, how the Lord just told the sea and the wind, peace be still. And what happened? The wind ceased and the, there was a great calm. His power. Do you believe him? To have that kind of a power? Why are you still troubled financially? Huh? Why are you still troubled emotionally? Why are you still troubled physically? Why can't we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and avail of his power and ask him to help us carry our load so that we could be able to experience what the Lord Jesus Christ said, take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. You understand that? Huh? Oh, take my yoke upon you. Why? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His power. Then, thirdly, his purpose. 
His purpose. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. First Peter 4, verse 12 and 13. Beloved, think it not strange. Think it not strange. Huwag magiging uh, uh, surprise sa inyo. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Concerning the fiery, please take note, huh? fiery trial. Just imagine the, ad- the adjective used here, fiery trial. Hindi lang trial ang sinabi dyan, ha? Fiery trial. Mainit at maapoy. Napagsubok. As though some strange thing happened to you. Nakakala mo, meron mga bagay na hindi mo kilala at hindi mo alam na nangyari sa'yo. Na-surprise ka. Ba't ganito? And verse number 13 tells us, but rejoice. Wow! How can you rejoice? How can you rejoice in fiery trials? Well, how? But rejoice. Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. I'd like you to look at those words. Look at those words and learn from them. What was God's purpose in those trials? First, to be partakers of His sufferings. You know how the Lord suffered? Diba? You know how the Lord carried His cross? You know how the Lord was mocked by the Romans and the Jews? You know how they put crown of thorns on His head? That blood began to ooze out? You know how he was beaten up huh? by, 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 by belts with uh, uh, nails in it? You know how he was slapped? You know how they tried to pull down his beard? You know how he walked on Calvary's road? You know how many times he fell down? You know how he nailed how they nailed their hands on the cross. You know how they lifted up that cross to the ground. Realize that with those nailed hands, do you realize how painful it is to be hanging right there on the cross? Sabi ng Panginoon sa atin, Maging partaker lang kayo ng counting suffering ko. Ayaw nyo? Di ba? Nakokomplain na kayo. Samantalang dahilan sa aking suffering, sa langit ang punta nyo. Hello? Hello? Ha? Counting bagay sa buhay mo, nasasaktan ka. Counting bagay sa buhay mo, na offend ka. Samantalang ikaw naman ay may kasalanan lahat ng mga ito. Panginoon ba may kasalanan o ikaw? Ha? Nangangawa-ngawa ka pag mayroong ilang mga bagay na trouble na lumapit sa iyo. Isipin mo ang sufferings ng Panginoon sa iyo. Yun na lang, di ba? Hindi naman niya pinapadama sa'yo lahat ng sufferings niya eh. Am I right? Sinasabi niya ng Panginoon sa, sa atin, maging partikel ka lang ng kahit na kunting sufferings ko para malaman mo ang ibig sabihin ng pananampalataya. Hello? Para maranasan mo kung ano ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa'yo para ka maligtas. Nakakainis nang makita ang ganyang mga anak ng Diyos. Naturo ako ng turo dito, wala kayo nagkikilala, wala kayo nalalaman. Pu- 
pupunta ka lamang na Ekesia, nagihirapan ka pa. Bibigay ka lang ng offering na pe-pressure ka. Magsosol winning ka lang, hindi mo kayang gawin. Konting panahon lang ang pwede mong ibigay sa pagiling ko sa Panginoon, hindi mo kayang gawin. Busy ako, busy ako, busy ako. Pero pag kailangan mo siya, ayaw mo sabihin ng Panginoon sa'yo, busy ako eh. Hello? Di ba? Eh kung halimbawa dumadalangin ka, all of a sudden narinig mo sa Panginoon, pasensya ka na, busy ako eh. Ano ba ang kaibahan ng pulpitong ito? Sa ibang pulpito? Hinihimay natin lahat ng mga bagay dito. Wala tayong iniiwan kahit kaunti. O sabi niya, di ba? Very clear, sabi ni Peter. To be partake of His suffering. Alam niyo ba kung paano nagpartake si Peter ng suffering sa ating Panginoon? He was crucified upside down. Do you realize that? Gusto siyang ipako sa krus tulad ni Kristo. Anong sabi niya? No. You will crucify me upside down. They did that to him. Do you think that Peter complained? No. He was even happy when they did that to him. Do you know how John the Beloved became partaker of Christ's sufferings? Huh? He was thrown into a boiling cauldron of oil. He still came out alive. And then because they cannot kill him, they cannot kill him. Just imagine ang isang tao itapon sa kumukulong langis. Buhay pa din siya. Palagay mo kaya anong itsura niya? Ha? Anong itsura niya? Palagay niyo kaya hindi masakit? Halimbawa kaya masunog yung kamay mo. Masunog. Third degree burns. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Ha? Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Pero terrible, konting bagay lang na dapat mong gawin para sa Panginoon magsakripisyo ka, hindi mo magawa. Alam niyo, totoo lang, nasabihin ko sa inyo ito, ha? Ma-offend ka lang kung gusto ma-offend. Inutil lang iba sa inyo, eh. Wala kayong pakinabang. Do you know how Bartolomeo became partaker of Christ's suffering? Do you know how? Huh? He was tied to a tree. And they began to sow the tree. Kasama siya. Sige nga, ramdaman mo nga ang nilalagari ang katawan mo. Palakulin kita dyan, nakita mo. Maglingkod tayo sa Panginoon. Hindi lang yung ngawa-ngawa ako ng ngawa dito. Wala kayong ginagawa kay Kristo. Binigyan na tayo ng Panginoon ng magandang building eh. Binigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng magandang upuan dyan na nakakatulog ka. Binigyan tayo ng Panginoon, komportabling gusali. Pinakamaganda sa lahat ng mga Baptist buildings. Sabi ng Panginoon sa atin, kaunting sacrifice lang, kung pwede ba? Binibigay ang trial sa akin, sa atin, for us to be partakers of His suffering. Ba't ko nasasabi sa inyo to? Naging partaker ako ng sufferings eh. Alam niyo ba yan? Ha? 
in 47 years of pastoring in Sigasia, in 53 years of preaching the gospel, do you, want to, do you want me to tell you the litany of sufferings I experienced? Hindi matatapos ang gabing ito. Then, secondly, the purpose is to experience exceeding joy. To experience exceeding joy. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng experiencing exceeding joy? Alam mo, dumaan ka sa mahigpit na pagsubok, di ba? Dumaan ka sa mahigpit na trial ng buhay, tapos later on, na-solve yan. Di ba natutuwa ka? Alam mo yung exceeding joy na sinasabi dito? Hindi rito eh. Langit yun eh. Amen? Langit yun. That one day, we are going to experience exceeding joy. Hindi ho langit ang mundo. Hindi langit ang maraming pera. Hindi langit na mayroong magandang bahay. Nawanawaan niyo ba ako? Hindi ho langit ang nagdadrive ng mga gandang kotse. Hindi langit yung marami kang kaibigan. Hindi langit yung mayroong kapangyarihan. Lahat na nabanggit ko sa inyo, mayroon ako eh. Di ba? Pero hindi langit yun eh. Hinihintay ko pa rin ang langit bibigay ng Panginoon sa akin. Exceeding joy. Hindi lang joy. Exceeding joy. Meron isang awitin ang sabi, where Jesus is, this heaven there. Totoo yun. Oo. But so many times, you know, when problems come, we forget that Jesus is there. Correct? We become so engrossed in looking at our problems. Di ba? We begin to forget. Sabi ng Panginoon sa atin, Hoy! Nandito ako! Pero alam mo, hindi sinisigaw na gano'n ng Panginoon eh. Di ba? Anong sabi ni Elijah? Anong sabi ni Elijah? Kumulog, wala ang Panginoon eh. Kumidlat, wala ang Panginoon eh. Di ba? Oo. Then says, humangin, wala ang Panginoon eh. And then he says, but a still small voice. No. Oh. May ikpit ang preaching ko. Sabihin niyo sa akin, gusto niyo pa rin ako maging pastor. Yung pinuntahan kong church kanina, ang isang akusasyon nila sa pastor nila, masyadong may ikpit ang preaching ah, kung ano-ano pinag sa pulpito. Ayaw nila ng ganun. Kaya dapat siya mag-step down sapagkat hindi siya qualified. Ano? Gusto niyo mo ba ako maging pastor niyo? Ha? Kung ayaw niya ako maging pastor, kayong umalis, hindi ako. Tama mali? Tira ka. Ako ang nagsimula nito. Sinibulan ko, wala ka dito, tapos papaalisin mo ako dito.
Ah, sabi ng ibang mga ano, pag nawala ako dito, maghihirap si pastor. Oh, palagay mo. Pag wala na kayo dito, ibebenta ko to. Lilipat ako ng Mindanao. Bibili ko ng malaking lupa doon. Gagayahin ko si Apollo Kibuloy. Oh, humanly speaking, kaya ko hindi. Ha? Oy, nagayabang ako sa inyo. Nagayabang ako ha. Lord, patawarin mo ako. Mas magaling ako magsalita kay Kibuloy. Totoo lang. Pahinga ang tissue. Hindi siya gumagamit ng tissue. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, I speak, I speak in folly. Nagkita niyo yan? I speak in folly. Oo. Ganun din ako in a while. Para malaman ninyo. To experience exceeding joy. Inihintay natin yun eh. Inihintay natin yun eh. Kaya lang siyempre may nahuuna sa atin eh. Oo. Ewan ko kung bakit tayo alam natin yung langit exceeding joy pero ayaw natin mamatay. Di ba? Di ba? Lahat tayo sasabihin. Panginoon, pahabain niyo pa ang buhay ko. Eh, ang gulo na rito eh. Tama? Ang gulo na eh. And then thirdly, to reveal His splendor and the quality of our faith. Yung ganda nun. Ha? Bakit may trials? To reveal His splendor and the quality of our faith. Job 23.10 Ano nakalagay sa Job 23.10? But He knoweth the way that I take when He had tried me. What? I shall come forth as Tanso. Tanso ba o gold? So what's the purpose of trials, folks? Para makita ninyo. Ha? Para i-welcome natin ang trials kahit mahirap. Di ba? Oo. To reveal His splendor. The splendor of my God and the quality of my faith. In conclusion, what should be our attitude? What should be our attitude? Is it of fear? Matthew 8. 26, why are ye so fearful? Or is it of faith? Luke chapter 12 and verse number 28. If then God so clothed the grass, This is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the op- oven. How much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Sabi ng Panginoon. Panginoon ang sabi nito eh. Itong words niya eh. Ha? Yung anda mo important sa, Pangin- sa Diyos eh. Di ba? Sabi na ang Panginoon ng Yesu Cristo, consider the lilies of the field. Importa sa Panginoon yun eh. Yung ang maliit na ibon, pinapakain niya eh. Oh, ang sabi niya dito, ikaw pa. 
e caupá. Oh, ye of little faith. Diba? So what should be our attitude? Is it of fear or of faith? You know what you should do? We should cry out to the Lord. Yan. We should cry out to the Lord in Luke 17, verse number 5. It says, And the apostles said unto the Lord, What? What? Sabi ng mga apostles, Say it. Ready? Go. Increase our faith. Can we cry out to the Lord for that? Do you know that according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 7, that the servants of the Lord are comforted by the faith of His people. The servants of the Lord are comforted by the faith of His people. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress. By what? By your faith. Look, please, please. Ako ang servant ng Panginoon dito, di ba? Nainawala ba kayo Ako ang servant ng Panginoon dito, di ba? I-comfort nyo naman ako. Sa paano? Sa pamamagitan ng pananamparatahin nyo. Kasi malaking comfort yan eh sa pastor. Pag makita niya na yung mga members niya natututong manamparataya sa Panginoon eh. Malaking comfort sa akin na kapag ako nagtuturo sa inyo, natututo kayo eh. At ginagawa niyo sa buhay niyo. Eh. Yun ang sabi ni Apostle Paul dito eh. Hindi ba? What should be our attitude? Hebrews 10.23 Hold fast on our faith to a faithful God. Natin niya, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? For He is faithful that promise. Anong ibig sabihin ng hold fast sa wikang Tagalog? Panghawakan mo. Amen ba? Panghawakan mo ang pananampalataya mo sa isang Diyos na tapat sa ating lahat, na lahat ng kanyang pinangako, tutuparin niya. And then lastly, learn from the faithful men and women of Hebrews 11. Learn from the faithful men and women of Hebrews 11. Ay salamat. Matatapos na. Hindi kayo ako nagpapasalamat. Namimitig na yun pa ako eh. Dapat yung mga puwet niyo umiinit na, di ba? Hebrews 11, beginning verse number 31, or 32. And what shall I more say? Adahan-dahanin ko, ha? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak, and Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel. Tinan niyo yung mga taon to. Mga perfect ba to? Ha? Yung Samson? Perfect ba yun? Terrible. Kasama dito sa Hall of Faith. Pambira naman buhay to. Hindi ba? Dapat ikaw ang kasama. Mas mali nila kay Samson eh. Tama? Pero ito niyo. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David. David? Is 
Samuel of the prophets. Verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, walks valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, women received their dead race to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they, may, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted. Binato, nilagare, were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Ito mga taon to, ibibilang, ibibilang ito na dumi ng mundo. Sapagkat yung binibilang nilang matindi at maganda at mahusay sa mundo, yung nakatara sa palasyo, yung nakatara sa malaking bahay, yung nagmemeno ng magandang kotse, pero ito mga to? Ha? Sabi ng Bible, of whom the world was not worthy. Nangunawaan niyo ba yan? Huh? They wandered in deserts, in mountains, in dens, and caves of the earth. Uwi kayo ngayong gabi. Saan? Sa kweba? Ha? Huh? Diba kapag umuwi ka sa kweba, iyak ka ng iyak. Bucket in verse 39. And this all, having obtained a good report through what? Through what? Through faith. So ito, learn from the faithful men and women of Hebrews chapter 11. Basahin niyo yung buong chapter. Verse by verse. Uminto ka sa isang verse. Namnamin mo. Di ba? Oh. Am I right? Namnamin mo. Nakakita ako ng mga members natin kumakain ng baseball sa labas. May nangwamasan ko. Kumain ng isa. Ano yun? Tinanamnam ang tawag doon. Ganon din ang pagbasa ng scripture. Pambihira ka. Peaceful lang tinanamnam mo. Pag scripture, baya wala sa'yo. Happy Foundation Day, Valenzuela. Ang buhay po natin sa mundong ito, hindi ho happy go lucky. Amen ba? Hindi. Oh, masaya ba kayo? Basta inyo, para kayong sinabuyan ng limang kilong balatong sa mukha eh. Wala kayong kagalakan.
Mm. Buti nag a ka pa ng service. Salamat, ha? Oh, dapat ba ako magpasalamat? Salamat, ha? Bigay ka ng offering. Salamat, ha? Ba't kaya ang ibang style ng preaching ni pastor ngayon? Di ba? Oo. Talagay ko yun ang resulta kung na-COVID ka ng dalawang beses. Pero look, talagay ko naman, matatanggap ninyo lahat ng sinabi ko dito sa pulpito. Totoo. Totoo sa buhay ko. Totoo sa buhay mo. Tumayo tayo lahat. Every head be bowed, every eye be closed. Wala na akong dapat sabihin sa inyo. You get the mic, this is microphones out here. And you men first, you men first, should be the example to be in God's altar to tell God, Lord, forgive me. Increase my faith. 